Hey there, everyone. This is Kyle Hutchison. I'm an account executive here at Trey, and I'm one of the co-hosts of today's group demo. Today's demo is just a casual setting to take you guys through a couple slides to understand our space, as well as spend the majority of the time in the product, showing you a couple use cases, and then time for live Q&A. So you can ask your questions all throughout the whole presentation, and we can actually show you the answers live within the product. Just to let everyone know, this is a really casual setting where we just want to share a little bit more about our industry, how Trey fits into the market, a little bit more about us as a company. We're going to spend the majority of today's time in the product, and then there's a live Q&A at the end. So feel free to type your questions in throughout the whole presentation, and hopefully we can answer your question live within the product. Joining me, I have Thomas Wang. He's a sales engineer here. He's going to be a operations manager. So she's going to give a little bit of a personal account on how she uses Trey internally. So just a little bit of context, the space that we're in, it's commonly called iPass or integration, automation, has multiple different names. We're not recreating the wheel. We're doing things a little differently. So if you look along the green line there, companies like Tipco and Informatica, these are companies that are primarily sold to on-premise, back-end systems, IT, really heavy software platforms. You need a lot of specialists. And these companies were born 10, 20 years ago. Fast forward about 10 years, kind of mid-2000s, companies like Boomi and MuleSoft were disrupting that space as cloud software was just coming into the fold. Still really big, kind of heavy software backend. You need specialists to build out these platforms. And then if you kind of fast forward to the last 10 years, there's just been a proliferation of different SaaS platforms that are very easy to use. You're trying to make the kind of consumer feel in the backend business. So you're a lot of new roles are coming into play, like marketing operations or business operations, as people are moving towards the best in breed for all these different software platforms. And it's more or less of, instead of going with a platform play like a Salesforce or an Oracle, you're trying to connect all the best in class systems. And with that, you need to not as much integrate the different platforms, but it's more about driving automation. And with that, you need to move quickly and it has to be less complicated. So that's really where Trey kind of comes into play. I um, mean, you can see a little screen grab right there, but our customers describe our platform as being flexible and easy, but powerful and scalable as well. And we're recreating this new market as more of general automation rather than integration or iPaaS. And what this means is like, we're trying to connect tools that sales and marketing professionals using them there every day. You're talking Slack and Gmail, you know, automating and connecting these platforms to Intercom, which is a best in breed in app chat or on your website, back to Salesforce and Marketo, enrich your data with Clearbit. So it's just all these best in breed. You want to be able to connect them and move very quickly. And so that's where Trey comes into play. And when it comes to different use cases with our platform, you really start to see how quickly you can move, how easily you can grab different APIs and different backend systems. The use cases really start to proliferate. A great quote from Santosh, who is Segment, who's a customer of Trey. I was like, once you realize the potential, you get familiar with the UI and how easy it is to drag and drop, you'll see our interface. It just kind of feels like you're whiteboarding. You can pull our platform into so many different directions. So for marketing, what we're going to actually spend a little bit of time on today in the demo is uh, lead routing, lead scoring, data enrichment. That also kind of falls into sales, but how do you get these leads to your sales in the tools that they use quickly? Same with support. We talked about intercom as well as passing to your backend CRM system and just little things that you don't think about. Like a support rep may spend three to five minutes on every single support ticket, uploading data between systems it can just be done automatically. And you don't need specialists and IT to put this integration together. It's your support managers your CSMs can build out these integrations quite quickly. How are we able to do this? Trey kind of is set up in a very unique way. We have connectors that we're able to build wrappers around the API endpoints for all these different systems, and we're able to do it extremely quickly on the back end. We have an internal tool called Connector Press. So depending on the plan that you, if you move forward with us, we can scope those out and build those as part of your evaluation. We also have universal connectors where we can connect to multiple different REST-based APIs seamlessly while we're testing, as well as you can use those in the long run as well if you don't want a connector built out or depending on the API, it's not needed. And we also have a CSV processor, really, really powerful and 
used in a lot of use cases for uploading large CSVs. This is also if you're not going to build out a connector for a specific platform, or you're just coming back from like a trade show and you need to ingest large lead lists. Great thing for marketing, quickly get your leads to your sales reps. We've had a lot of our marketing professionals just come back from trade shows and it's all about getting that CSV into a workflow and then their job's done. They can uh, worry about wrapping up the trade show. This is a good slide. I like to call it our NASCAR slide from different sections. People are coming. So like you see Fortune 500 companies like IBM and Lyft. And so just a couple of things on this slide. We're going to focus a little bit on marketing automation, specifically with lead routing. So companies like Iterable and AdRoll and DigitalOcean are using it specifically for those systems. So I'm going to transition over to Lauren, who is our marketing operations manager, to talk us through the DigitalOcean use case, as well as kind of how she's using Trey internally. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> Sliding in here. <laughs> so DigitalOcean's use case is really cool. They're using Segment, Marketo, Salesforce, and they have just a, a huge lead volume. And they're using Trey to power all of their lead routing. And I wanted to just like make it a little bit real for the audience and talk about how Trey has been beneficial for me as a marketing ops professional. So we use Trey for, as you may imagine, many things internally, not just in the marketing department. But so specifically for me, one of the many powerful use cases is lead routing, lead assignment. When I joined Trey, we had a very small team. We just had a few SDRs. So the business rules were pretty straightforward. And that meant when a lead came through Marketo from our website, we were just using random assignment to a few different SDRs. We didn't have any logic needed around company size or geography, et cetera. But as we have been growing very quickly, the team is expanding and the business logic requirements become more complex. And so I think about five months ago, I transitioned our lead assignment to be entirely in Trey instead of relying on Marketo and Salesforce. And so what that means is that we are able to have, as the business is growing, we're able to add sophistication and complexity almost every week if needed. So that scalability is really powerful. And Thomas is going to go into some detail to show how this looks in the product. But one of the things that's so neat for me as an ops person is that one of the things I really care about is that our leads are captured, attributed correctly, and then they're handed over to the SDR as quickly as possible. As we all know, if the longer it takes for a lead to be followed up on, the less likely you are to convert that lead to business. So getting that lead into the hands of the SDR as quickly as possible. And in a lot of cases, we automatically send that first touch, that first reply in outreach. And again, that's a tray workflow that's figuring out what sequence should they be getting? Who should that sequence be coming from? So I think with that, that's a good time to have Thomas come show what this looks like a little bit in the trade platform. And feel free, if you have questions for me specifically, feel free to ask those in the Q&A and we'll get to them at the end. Awesome. So we're just going to jump right into the platform itself. So what you see here is our workflow builder. The way that we like to kind of explain it specifically for these use cases are if you can kind of draw out and map out your lead routing type of logic on a whiteboard or some sort of flowchart builder like Lucid Charts, you can essentially build the same thing on Trey. You know, it's a very powerful tool from a visual manner and from a technical standpoint. So in this example, you'll see in the middle is where you start constructing your workflow. You can drag and drop steps in every time you click on a specific connector, you'll be able to configure it. So in this case, we're just simply triggering this workflow on record create and the record type is lead. You can do various other operations like on record field change. So for example, if a lead status changes, you can trigger off that as well. In this example, we're just using a new lead as, as a use case. 
keep in mind these drop downs also auto populate with the type of objects in your account. So if you have any systems, custom fields, or custom objects, these will populate with what's available in your instance. So moving on, again, with this trigger set up automatically in real time, whenever a lead is created, it'll trigger this workflow to start. So in the next step, if we want to pull back additional details about this lead, all we have to do is drag another connector in. So think of these blocks as actions and triggers you can do. There's typically just one trigger off the top, but each block can allow you to do certain actions. So these would include getting records, updating records, or creating records. So in this step, I'm going to label this first so we know what we're doing. This is getting lead. Just with one step, we can grab any number of fields we want about the lead. So again, the record type here is lead. And I'll pull back some example fields that typically make sense um, from a lead routing perspective. So lead ID, let's get the name, email. That should do for now. So again, this trigger starts when a lead is created. We get these five specific fields about the employee. So now, if you want to add simple logic, you can use some of our core connectors like the Boolean condition. You can check for employee size as an example. So let's label this employee greater than 1,000. So to pass information into this condition step, you simply drag it over a previous step. So you can grab information from any of the previous steps. So this example, we're just grabbing it from the get lead step. But if you have multiple steps above here, you can pass any number of information into a specific step. So we're just going to check for employees. Is it greater than 1,000? Cool. So employee count is greater than 1,000. We branch to the right, if not to the left. So this is simple true-false logic. If you want to add a bit more flavor to that, you can also do branching. So this allows you to make multiple branches. So let's use the example where perhaps in a different, each person's title, depending on what they're in. So perhaps sales, marketing, and engineering. So in this manner, we can take different branches depending on what department they're in. And there's always a default branch that you can take to have a fallback that you can go under. So once it falls under the specific branch you're interested in, again, you would pull in another Salesforce connector to apply that change. So if you wanted to assign this lead to somebody, you can do an update. You would simply use another function such as update record. Use type lead, the record ID you would be able to get from the lead object over here. And you'd be able to update things like the owner. So depending on the logic that it falls under, you would assign the lead to a specific user there. So some of the things that I wanted to also show was the ability to manipulate and check for logic without having to write code. So You'll see we kind of went over some of the service connectors like Salesforce, core connectors you've seen just to Boolean and branching where you can build logic. There's also a whole section of helpers that our users find very friendly to use without having to write code. So I'm just going to go over one as an example. So in this use case, text helpers are quite easy to use. So some of the things that you can check for, for example, would be contains. So this allows you to check for text patterns. So let's say I want to find this person's role. A title could be Marketing manager could be director of marketing, but the keyword that you're looking for is marketing. So you would pass the title from the lead and simply check for the pattern marketing. Furthermore, you can also check for email domains. So in this case, in our Salesforce instance, we actually do already have enriched data, but if you do need to enrich data with other platforms, you can use things like Clearbit, and sometimes they require a domain. So let's say I want to get domain from an email address and also use the helper get domain from email address, passing the domain 
pass in the email here and the result will be the domain there. And the last one I wanna show is just kind of generic domain. A lot of times in lead routing cases, if they match a specific domain, then you might wanna map it to an account, but if they have a generic domain, you might want to, you obviously want to treat it a bit differently because you don't know what company they work for. So you pass in the same thing, just email, and it gives you a true false, whether or not it's a generic domain. So I kind of touched a bit on Clearbit earlier. There's a lot of enrichment tools out there, but specifically in here, if you want to help uh, lead routing and build additional logic on top of that, and you don't already have a lead enrichment tool, you can use some of these connectors pre-built to enrich uh, company by domain or person company by email. So you do the same thing. I'm just kind of passing email again and again through these steps, but just to show you that there are, as long as the tools you want to use support web APIs, then you'll be able to use that as a connector within Trey. Perfect. Thanks, Thomas. And just kind of one thing I, I like to add in right here is what's really powerful about this tool is kind of bringing back to like what we were talking about through the slides is exposing more of a general automation platform. So everything that Thomas was going through here is something that can easily be learned. You don't need to be a specialist with a developer background. Primarily, we're pulling out API endpoints so that the fields on the side should be names that you're familiar with because these are the platforms that you're using. So there's a little bit of a learning curve. And while Thomas moves really quickly, he's a pro in our platform. If you do or you're looking to evaluate our product, we like to run through code apps like this with your specific tools. So part of us building and evaluating the platforms that you like to connect, we're also showing you how to use the tool. And kind of through osmosis, most customers through a code app or two through the evaluation learn quite a bit. So when we switch gears and we're moving towards launch, we launch customers the exact same way. So we identify what is the priority build. We'll help quite a bit to get it off the ground, but you're learning how to build this. And when it comes to making nuances, you want to change your automation strategy a little bit. You don't need to call us right away. You can go in and change things on your own and you should be confident to be able to do that. So that's why we're looking to launch our customers to really become users of this automation platform. We don't want to kind of hold you by the chain and you guys have to come back to us because it's a very complicated, specialized build. So it's the complete opposite. We're looking to really enable people to use our platform. And with that, I guess we can switch over to some questions and see quite a few coming in and we can uh, answer a few right now. The first question coming in from Jason is, can you create a generic web URL to receive a web hook to fire off a given workflow? Yeah, great question. So in this example, we had just simply started with a Salesforce trigger. Anytime there's a real-time event-based trigger, they are based off of webhooks. For some cases where they allow us to, we would create a wrapper around it in the Salesforce case. We can also go over all the various trigger options. So uh, specific to the question that you asked, we do have a generic webhook trigger here. You can use this to receive any data payload from any source. The other common one is also scheduled trigger. So if you're looking for more of a cron type interval job, you can use that as well. So just an example, going into the webhook trigger, whenever that's selected, you simply go to the gearbox on the left, and this would be the workflow URL that you post data into. One thing too, I just wanted to mention, our QA channel is not seen by everyone. You, you're the only one who can see it, but we also have a, tra a really cool trade workflow built. So if anyone else does these Zoom webinars, a uh, trade workflow that we have is all the questions are captured and then uploaded and referenced to our Salesforce backend CRM. So then we can identify the sales rep and then automatically get you guys a quick follow-up. So I see a few of you guys already typing in, like you would like to evaluate our platform. If that's the case with anyone else on the line that you would like to get contacted, feel free to type that in QA box or any questions or anything unique about your platform or your questions and you know, you'll get followed up with really promptly. But just uh, moving on. So a good question coming in here from a few people is back to the connectors. Is that something that you can develop on your own? So today with the connector press that I mentioned during the slides, it's something that we only have as an internal process really for quality control. So when we do need to go fix bugs, we can do it really quickly. Other platforms, kind of lower end, 
they do the opposite model so they can have a very wide range of connectors but when there are issues kind of have to go back to the source that it was built so we're avoiding that we do have what i mentioned are some generic universal connectors so the webhook is one but we can also go over the http client and thomas will kind of explain what that means yeah so with the http client once a generic connector similar to the webhook one it works almost identical to how postman does so you can use all the rest functions like post put get put the url that you need headers such as authentication content type and put in any body uh, this is also an easy way for you to construct object types so you can put any type of structure under there we kind of went over the logical operators and connectors previously so there's kind of three main sections there's just core connectors there's the helpers that we went over like for example the text ones but down here are a bunch of service connectors so there's a whole suite over 300 pre-built connectors now but anything that you don't see here as long as there's web apis for us to build around again we can build those and specifically with the generic connector, you can also use that to connect to any system you'd like as well. Perfect. Another question coming in here from uh, Mark, and this might be applicable to some of the other people on the call. And, you know, is Trey an effective platform for smaller companies? So say like you're under 100 employees, you're, you're growing, or maybe you have a direct to consumer market, kind of smaller e-commerce. Trey is exceptional for those type of use cases. And part of kind of what we're showing you today in this group demo, this is similar to like a code that I explained earlier, how we'll prove out your use case. We, we do have a team that focuses specifically on that segment and we do have uh, flexibility on our pricing. So if you fall into the category of under 100 employees, we can work with you, but we are looking for people who are a little bit more technical, who can kind of get in the product and work alongside us in these code dev type environments. And that's where we could have flexibility on our pricing. But if you really think about, you know, if you're an e-commerce platform or things where you have backend jobs, they're pretty simple, maybe manual inputting data or moving things around. Those are prime examples where workflow automation can, can really save you a lot on your, your margins. So you sort through those. Um, some of the things that you know you can also expand on. I initially in the demo I didn't want to go into too much detail, but as a general automation platform, you can connect to any number of systems within the workflow. So specifically to our internal use cases, a lot of times as the lead falls through our workflow through the journey, we might also want to pass them into other systems so they get contacted right away. So uh, one of the tools we use internally as well as outreach. Once a lead goes through the workflow to the specific branch you're interested in, you can add them to the sequence that they're supposed to go under based on the criteria that they followed. So it's very easy for us to kind of send information to and from various tools. So you're not limited by just point to point in that manner. So for some of the more technical users as well, we went through some of the helpers that allow you to manipulate data without having to write code. But some of the more complex things that you can do as well is kind of write your own script to do things like lead scoring or kind of more complex filters there. You can also connect to any disparate systems such as databases. So we have connectors to most of the database systems that you can imagine. Here's just a few as an example, Redshift as well. So anything you can imagine if you want to pull kind of customer usage data or data about your platform or information stored in other places to help you route leads or do stuff like that, uh, certainly something you can do on Trey. Good question coming in from Jason. Can you send data to a generic webhook in JSON format? Also, do you work with SOAP APIs? Yeah, so uh, all the data that comes into Trey is actually in JSON format. So when you go into debug logs to see things like input output of each step, right now there's no workflows runs for this specific workflow, since this is an example, but the data you pass through here, as an example, you would pass, let's say you want a person object. These are all constructed and sent in JSON format. So first name, last name as an example. These are just ways for you to construct the JSON object. For SOAP APIs, we do connect to SOAP APIs as well, but the HTTP client currently does not support the SOAP protocol. So we would just develop the connector in-house, I'll mention. So our connectors team, we have a whole team of engineers that push out new connectors all the time. So it's just something you have to work out with your account manager or AE 
on something we can we can address for you. Perfect. And this session will be recorded and we'll get it out on our YouTube channel. Feel free to check out Trade.io on YouTube. We have a bunch of these recorded demos already saved. And just for a little plug for every weekly group demo, we try to cover a different topic. So today was lead routing. Our next one, I think we're thinking about kind of continuing the trend and looking at account-based marketing. So if today's was interesting, kind of like the next chapter, we're going to focus on the next weekly group demo. Going back to some of these questions, if you guys can hang with us. A few people were asking if you can basically become a managed partner. So if you're more like a development shop and you have your own client base, we do work with these types of partners and we're happy to explore them. So that's something you can certainly follow up with your account executive and we can explore that conversation. Another great question, I saw this come in earlier too. So it kind of goes back to the universal connectors. So if we don't have the systems in our library, we can include this as part of the evaluation. Typically, the starting point there is our professional plan. And we can kind of scope out how many connectors that you need that are not part of our library. Also, you know, that's a good conversation to kick up with your account executive because internally they may know that certain connectors are in the pipeline from other contracts. So be sure to explore that conversation. But when it really comes down to is like other platforms, if they're REST-based APIs and there's a few parameters around authentication, we can connect to those through that HTTP client or the web hook. And then if you have different systems, whether they be on-premise, or platforms that can spit out a CSV and you don't need that integration in real time, there are several ways to get a workflow started with our platform. So part of working with a team like Thomas and I is we explore your specific use case, identify how our platform can work, and then given our work together and kind of how you grasp our product, we can really work with you on pricing depending on what works for you. Some good questions too about self serve. So, Thomas, if you guys get to the point where you get a trial of our platform, top right where it says help, this is a good area to access chat. So, when you're in a live trial, you can chat with our team, but you can also access the docs. You can also publicly check out our docs as well just by typing in tray.io forward slash documentation. We just a few months ago published a whole new library. This was completely redone. So really nice interface, but a lot of really good content in here. So if you are looking for specific integrations or more information on those universal connectors, our search capability is really powerful. Go in here. This is also what you would leverage if you're going to do a little bit more of the, the self-serve route with us as well. Another good question from Mark. Does any of the data live on your site? Or is it simply moving data from one software solution to another? Yeah, so in terms of the data that comes through, it is more so passing data to and from various steps. We do store logs data for 30 days. It's, it helps when you debug and figure out things that are going wrong when you're first constructing the workflow. So it's not stored permanently, and we do erase that data after 30 days. We have options, obviously, from any, some customers who either want to store no data at all or for a few amount of days, but the default is to store just logs data for 30 days. Did you show what the logs look like in the product? No. Okay. A straightforward question from uh, AJ. It's just asking if we can connect Active Campaign to Microsoft Dynamics. So those are two platforms that we do have on our system, and that would be a workflow that we could accomplish. Good question coming in here from Tanaya Green, if you're still on the call. Very similar to kind of what we were doing today, asking about a calendar tool within Outlook 365, integrating that with Eloqua, and then back to Microsoft Dynamics. So again, just a really good example of what you might want to come to your account executive at Trey with um, a kind of specific project. Then we would jump into the product with you and kind of explore with your specific setup if it's something that we can or cannot do. So last question coming in from Mark is just asking about our security certifications and just to have all of our security docs. So similar to the docs page right here, 
if you go to trade.io forward slash trust. And Thomas will go there right now. We like to put everything out there. So from our system status to our different securities and compliance, feel free to scroll through here. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out about this page. We'll happy to, well, I'm happy to go into more detail. Last question, just asking about our YouTube channel. Definitely go check it out, Trade.io. I think we have over 100 videos on there. This group demo, I think we're upwards of 10 or 20 of these are on there as well with specific titles about what we focus on. But definitely go check it out. There's some training on there. The majority of the earlier videos are run by sales engineers like Thomas. So they really go into the weeds. Thanks for everyone who uh, hung with us. Still see quite a few people on the line. That's it for the questions. And if you did reach out, we'll follow up with you promptly today. And feel free to join us next week. We'll go over account-based marketing. Thanks, guys.